It's been a while since Frick has updated his journal with anything new. Really had nothing new happened for a long time, just walking on his way hoping to find something to guide him. But suddenly, he felt a weird urge telling him to look back and check on Chica, Lucy and Sean and make sure they're okay. But Frick quickly realized, when he looked back, the three cats were not there. The name tag he had dropped from his hand and it quickly hit him. Frick remembered what had happened. Hey guys, um, first off, I, I, I'm just gonna start by saying thank you so much to each and every single one of you who watched my videos and thought I deserved a sub from them. We're officially over 100 subscribers now and I just cannot believe we got there. I would have never imagined I would get here. It's just, it's insane to me that I genuinely got to this point and it's all thanks to you guys. You watched my videos and you thought I was worth it to subscribe to me and I don't know how to thank you guys but the least I can do is just tell you thank you and I think this video deserves to be the video where I tell you the origin of Ferric, how I came up with this name and what does it mean to me and also the story of CLS. If you remember from my first video, um, Ferric was the name tag I found and CLS was Chica, Lucy and Sean, the three cats. That story is true but it's not telling you the details of everything. Where is Chica, Lucy and Sean and how did I find that name tag and all that. And that's what I want to explain for this video as a way to thank you guys. And basically tell you more about me and the channel. But before I get into that I want to answer three questions that I've been getting constantly from every person I meet in real life. About the channel um, and these three questions. I think a lot of you as well might be asking. So the first question is why I'm hiding the channel from people I know in real life. Um, a question that I could ask from my like my friends in real life. The few who know about the channel. I don't tell anyone that I have a YouTube channel. And why I don't do that is because I don't want people to feel... I don't want to say pressure but feel like they have to subscribe to me just because they know me. Basically what I want, I want to earn my subscribers and I don't want it to be... Oh, I know this person, so I'm gonna subscribe to them. In a way, at least until I get a certain like fan base, I don't want someone to subscribe to me just because they know me, but I want them to subscribe to me because they like my content and they wanna watch it. If that makes sense, I just wanna earn my subscribers and not have people subscribe to me just because they know me. So that's why I've been hiding my channel and I haven't really told, I haven't been telling anyone about it. Only a few people have known about my channel and some have accidentally known through these people, but Generally, I don't tell anyone. The second question, because I want to be quick with this, is why I'm making content in English. I partially answered this before where I said that I can't sit in front of this mic and talk to you guys in Arabic because I know that you, your native language is English and you don't understand me and it's just, I grinch the idea of speaking Arabic in front of a mic. I don't know why, I just cannot do it. And also, another part of that is that I want to make this channel worldwide. I don't want to just be a channel for Arabic countries and that's it. No, I want this channel to reach the whole world. And if there's a language for that, it's English and not Arabic. Not everyone speaks Arabic, but pretty much everyone speaks English. That's a big part of it, of why I'm making my content in English and not Arabic. Now, that does have a bit of a challenge for me because I'm not sure if that's how YouTube still works or not, but basically I think my channel still gets recommended more in Arabic countries or at least in Egypt, more than like worldwide. And that does kind of feel like a challenge, but I'm okay with that challenge and I'm ready to fight for it until I get to the point where YouTube recognizes me as a worldwide channel instead of just an Arabic channel, if that makes sense. Now, the last question is why am I playing small indie unpopular games most of the time? So, I've made it a thing for me that I wanna do on this channel what I like to do or play games that I like to play. Like something like the Linux video, which is, again, I know it's not interesting to like 90% of the people who watched it. I make videos because I want to make them and this channel to me, as I said in that video, is more of a journal for me to put on it what I want to be there for the memories and for the journey of this channel. So when I make a certain video, it's because I like it and if I play certain games, it's because I enjoy that game. Maybe at one point I will start playing more trendy games because I actually like them and not because they are trendy or I'll get views. I don't care about that. I just want to play the games that I enjoy. The small indie games that I play are really fun to me. So I think that's pretty much um, these three questions that are really important for me to answer now. Um, hopefully that cleared up 
for anyone who had this sort of questions now to get into the main point of this video which is ferric and cls i'm gonna leave cls till the end of the video because this is gonna be a little bit of a sad story and i'm sorry for that it may not fit this video being a celebratory video for 100 uh, subscribers it might be sad but i think it's a perfect time for it for now what i'm gonna talk about is ferric so i actually didn't know that ferric was a real name um, I know about Ferric being a real name after I came up with it. I looked up Ferric and it was, I think it's another way to call the name Patrick, if I'm not mistaken. But the way I came up with the name was by combining two words which described me, which is Pharaoh and Lunatic. Ferric. <laughs> Does that make sense? Maybe. Let me explain. The Pharaoh part is pretty self-explanatory. I'm Egyptian. And then the Lunatic part. Now that has a bit of a story, but before I went through a lot of like characteristic changes and a lot of stuff that happened to me that changed who I am. If you remember from any of my songs, I do talk about that a lot, like I miss the person who I was. In Locked Away, I miss the person who I was, not this lonely, broken fool. That's actually true, I miss the person who I was, which was a crazy, fun and lovable person. I was actually known as the crazed badger in some of the games that I played because I was crazy and I liked badgers. <coughs> Yeah, I was a lot more crazy than I am now, and it was just a lot more fun to be with. But I was known as basically the lunatic. So it was a fun connection to make lunatic and pharaoh, and I just kind of matched them together. And for some reason, my brain came up with the name Ferric, and I liked it. After the fact of creating the channel, I looked up the name Ferric. Turns out it's an actual name, but I'm not sure about that. Now, the last part is uh, CLS part. From my first video, if you saw it, I found the three cats, Chica, Lucy, and Sean. And they've been with me through the whole series. Uh, journey series i don't know how i'm gonna tell the story but please bear with me and please forgive me if i cry it, it's really emotional for me and it will make sense by the end of the video why cls is a big part of this channel and why it's ferric cls and not just ferric it will make sense so it started off from the beginning um when i was about i Honestly, I'm not sure, maybe like 12, 13, 14, I, I was young and um, I live in an apartment complex where we have like floors and each floor has two apartments. So on the floor under me is a, uh, a beard, a cat. She was pregnant and I called her kitty cat her Shimmy Shammer. Don't ask about the names. My naming was weird. It still kind of is weird. Yeah, kitty cat her Shimmy Shammer. So kitty cat her Shimmy Shammer was pregnant and one day she actually had three little kittens. Now, because they were on the floor under me, um, the neighbors right under us were the ones who took care of the kittens. They bought like a little box for them and they would sometimes feed them and all that. They were kind of taking care of them, except they had like one little kid that sometimes wouldn't be so nice to the kittens. And because I noticed that and my brother noticed that, we were kind of sad, so when we saw that, I came up with the idea um, with my brother to adopt these kittens to try and save them. The issue with that is my dad doesn't like cats and he would never let a cat in the house. So what we do and we had, what we've always done is take the cats and adopt them in my grandma's house, which is like two blocks away. It's not that far away. So what we did is one night during a match, um, football is a big thing here. So when there's like a big match, you would see no one's street. They would all be watching the match. So we came up with the idea, okay, during the match, we're going to sneak, <laughs> basically sneak and take the three little kittens in their box and take them to grandma and adopt them there and take care of them until they grow up. So we did. The match was uh, going on and we took the box, we sneaked by. <laughs> it was really funny, actually. It felt like we were like stealing something when we didn't. We were just taking care of cats. But yeah, it was really funny. We took the cats, we got them to grandma, and we took care of them. They grew up, um, and that's Chica, Lucy, and Sean. Now, here's the sad part. I don't have any pictures of them. I have nothing to remember them by because... As I said, I was young and I didn't have any phone. Um, I got my first phone, this one. I still have it. This is my first phone and I got it when I was, I think, either 16 or 18. I don't remember, but I got it when I was way older. So I didn't have a phone with a camera uh, and I couldn't take pictures of them to remember them. And um, so I can't tell you guys how they look like, but I, the uh, illustration for them God, I'm already kind of crying. I'm sorry. The illustrations for them are pretty... Uh, 
they they show them pretty well. Um, Chica is a brown, whitish one, and Lucy is a colorful one. And then Sean uh, is a black and brown one. Actually, Sean is the only one that I have a picture from. But even that picture, I took with my sister's phone and not my phone. So uh, yeah, they grew up at my grandma's house and. They were fine, um, and then things happened, and that's when the story actually begins. So Kitty Keller Shimshamar stu- stayed with them for a while, and then, of course, they, she left after a while, after they grew up, and, you know, they could depend on themselves. So Kitty Keller Shimshamar left, and we were left with Chica, Lucy, and Sean. And as I said in that first video, I mistakenly named them before seeing their genders, and again, I was a kid, I was dumb, I didn't even know. So Chica is actually a male. Lucy is the only one that's correctly named because she's a female and Sean is a female so I was dumb, okay? <laughs> guess I should tell you guys about their personalities first. So Chica was the most lovable little cat I've ever seen. When I would be laying down, Chica would always come and basically like if I'm laying down like this, Chica would come put her head on my shoulder here and look at me and sleep. That was like pretty much always and it was so cute. I, I love Chica so much. So yeah, Chica was a really lovable, cute one. Lucy was a fucking crazy one. <laughs> Lucy would, was the one that, like at 3 a.m. she would be zooming through the whole apartment, knocking everything over. She was nuts. <laughs> um, but I loved her for it. She was so playful, she was crazy, and she was amazing. And then Sean was the really shy, really scared one. They, it was the full spectrum of personalities. Lovable crazy and shy but yeah Sean was a really shy one he wouldn't really hang out with us that much he would most of the time be hiding it actually kind of shows their personalities in the banner where Lucy's like sk- jumping on the banner scratching it and Chica just lay- sitting down being lovable cutie and Sean being the one getting hit with everything and he's just a shy little boy uh, or girl <laughs> so before I talk about the story of of them each one individually I want to talk to you guys about well, let me say just, just here in Egypt, we don't have that much animal knowledge. Or Does that make sense? Yeah, we don't know a whole lot about animals and how to take care of them. And getting medical help for animals as much as humans is not as, as big of a thing here. It's not really known. So because I was young and I couldn't do a whole lot, I could only do the stuff that I was being told. And basically do as we always did. Um, Like you know the tradition of like feeding cats milk when milk is bad for them. That's kind of what I'm talking about. I went with these traditions and with these kind of ideas because again I was young and I couldn't really do what I wanted with the cats. I didn't like have my own money to like get some medical um, help or anything like that. I was just doing the best I can with what I had and what I knew at the time. So they were living with my grandma right and... Because they weren't getting the best attention ever and the best food ever, they would sometimes go out to get food and come back. Now, I told my grandma a lot of time to not let them out because they were raised in a house and outside is a lot more dangerous than a house and a house cat should never go outside, I understand that. But sometimes my grandma, because she's really old, she would forget or she would just not notice that they went out when she opened the door one time. So she did. they did go out a lot of the time and thankfully they would always come back safe and sound and they would be okay. Um, until one time, and this is part of Chica's story, um, one time Lucy and Sean came back they were fine but Chica didn't come back and it was like that for like a day. I was crazy worried, I didn't know what to do and I went out, I looked, out, looked for her everywhere and I couldn't find Chica. Um, so. Like, I think it was a couple days after that. I don't really remember the time, please forgive me. I don't remember how long it took. But one day, when I was still looking for her around, I heard a meow, a faint meow. And Kitty Katar Shimshamar was there as well that time. So I heard the meow, and I heard Kitty Katar Shimshamar meowing back. And she was like standing on the window, looking down and meowing at a meow that's coming from the bottom. At that time, I looked down, and I was like, what that? Uh, and I realized that Ketikara Shimishamar is meowing back because there is something. It's, it's like giving me a signal. So what I did is I went down and I looked around the area where the meow was coming from. And thank God I noticed um, Chica was locked by some fucked up people we have here. I'm not going to talk about them, but there are some fucked up people we have. I mean, I think it's everywhere in the world where 
they just hurt animals for no fucking reason. But thankfully, I heard Chica and I saw her. They basically locked her up in like a, I guess you could call it like an inside balcony. But she was locked up and there was like a, I don't know what it's called. It's like a, a really thin iron fence blocking her uh, from going outside. So immediately what I did was I tried to rip open the fence, but of course I couldn't do that with my hands. I went back home, I got really big scissors and I asked my sister for help as well. We went to that window and what I did is rip open a big part in that window. I basically ripped the whole fucking window for them down because I don't care, okay? They can go fuck themselves. Now, Chica was terrified. Of course she was and... What I had to do to get her out of that window because uh, she just wouldn't want to come out and she, I don't think she even remembered me that much. So she didn't want to come near me, but she needed the help. So what I did, I sacrificed my hand for it. I basically just let her grab onto my hand with her claws digging deeply into my hand. And I just pulled her out. I put her in, we had like a little basket. We put her in it and uh, my sister took her up to my grandma again. Now at that point my arm was just blood, this whole area was just blood because Chica was freaking out. I didn't care uh, one bit about it and I was really relieved and really happy I got her out of there. Um, so Chica thankfully and safely went back to grandma, I fed her, I gave her water, I made sure she was okay. Chica was okay, thankfully. Now here comes the second part of Chica's story. And I guess the part where it gets a little sad, a lot more sad. Um, so, as I said, they go out sometimes and this is another time where I was going to my grandma. I went there and I found Lucy and Sean sitting down and I didn't find Chica. Again, I freaked out. I asked grandma and she said she went out and she didn't come back yet. Now, of course, I started freaking out more. I looked everywhere in the house to make sure she wasn't like hiding and then... I decided to go outside to look. And the first thing I did was look out the window to see if I can spot her anywhere. And Chica was on the side of the road and she was dead. Now, um, I immediately just couldn't handle it and I started crying. At the point that my grandma saw that something was really wrong and she ran to me asking me what happened. And I just told her to look out the window and then I rushed out the door to go down and check on her. All I did was hold her in my hand, say my final goodbyes and put her away because I don't want her to just be on the side of the road. And that was the last time I saw Chica. I remember that was the first time I actually felt like Lucy and Sean knew what was going on and felt what I felt. Um, I don't know if they knew that Chica was gone, but I was on the side of the bed crying. I was on the floor, like laying my head on the side of the bed crying. And for the first time ever, probably I found Lucy and Sean being really sentimental to me. <laughs> Lucy, Lucy like came up to me and hugged me in a way. She like laid on my arm and like gave me a little cuddle and it was so cute. But I knew they knew something was wrong and they knew that Chica was gone. I know it's my fault and I know I couldn't take care of them. And in a way I should have been smarter and I should have just put them up for adoption back then when I got them. But I know why I didn't. I... I was young and I was dumb and that was the end of Chica and yeah, I just said my final goodbyes to her when she was in my arm and I put her away. So yeah, now only Lucy and Sean were left and God, I knew they felt it because I've never seen them like after that point they were really sentimental, a lot more lovable than they were before. Sean became a lot less timid and he would like sometimes come and hug me and basically make make me feel like it's okay. And Lucy as well, she wouldn't be as crazy and she would just she she was kind of like compensating for Chica's love in a way. Okay, I need to continue the story. Um, so uh, 
Now, so yeah, Lucy and John were left. I tried to take my best care of them after that point. I tried to tell grandma over and over again and remind her again to not let them out, keep them in the house and tried my best to look for ways to make it make life better for them. So now I'm gonna move on to Lucy's story. Um, so one day Lucy got really sick, like really sick and all I could do was give her some medicine that my grandma would tell me like this could help her or my mom would tell me that this would help her. Basic prescription I guess you would say and at one point she started getting better but then one day it got all worse again and sadly I just I couldn't ask him to get her to a vet because as I said animal like medical attention isn't something that's really known here or something that's normalized here so I was kind of just watching Lucy get more sick every day and I could do nothing about it I would look online for ways to help out I'd look everywhere and I just there's not much I can do I was young and I really had nothing to do in my hand so I just tried my best and I hoped that she would get better but then one day I went to my grandma to check on her and she was I, I could tell she was really just she was she was really sick and she like came up to the door and she kept meowing really loudly basically asking to go outside and in a way that felt like it just felt like Lucy was just trying to tell me let me go because I don't want to see you go through what you went through with Chica in a way she saw how much I suffered when I saw Chica dead in front of me and I don't know, I feel like she knew she was gonna pass away and didn't want me to see it. And I let her out. I knew that it was better for her. And maybe, just maybe, she can get some kind of medical attention from someone who would see her out there better than I am. Because God, I fucking suck and I hate myself. That was also my final goodbye to Lucy because she never came back. I don't know if she lived, I don't know if she died. But I just knew that I will never see her again. So that was Chica and Lucy, Lucy gone. And now I was only left with Sean. God, I'm really sorry. Thankfully, Sean's story isn't as bad. But I still feel terrible for what happened to Chica and Lucy because of me. Because I was careless and I was dumb. And I was just a naive kid who could not have taken care of cats. And I shouldn't have. So the taking care of them in the first place and I hope they can forgive me and I hope you guys can forgive me as well because I know it was a mistake and I know what I did wrong and I'm really sorry for it I wish I could go back and I would rather die myself than see, than see them die in front of me without me being able to do anything is that Chica and Lucy gone I was left with Sean and thankfully Sean wasn't sick and he wasn't because he was shy, he wouldn't go out. Like, I think he barely, if went, if he even went out at any time, I don't think he ever did. He was okay, but um, Sean at one time went out and he came back, thankfully he was okay, but he was pregnant or she was pregnant. And that's a kind of the happy ending to the story in a way. I know it's not really, but thankfully Sean came back, but yeah, she was pregnant and I can actually show you um, the three little kittens Sean had. It's, it's kind of funny because Sean and three little kittens looked exactly like Chica, Lucy and Sean in a way. It's like Sean was just telling me that they're like reincarnated for me. But I wasn't really happy about that because I knew I couldn't take care of them. As I said, I took this one was my sister's phone, not mine, because I didn't have a phone back then. Yeah, these are the three little kittens. You have Mia, Simba, and Waffles. It's this time I actually named them correctly to their genders. Yeah, I did well with naming them this time, and it's, I wasn't dumb. But Sean didn't stay a long time after that. Sean did go out after the three of them grew up. Sean went out and didn't come back. But I think it's okay. I think he took care of himself. 
or uh, of herself. And then I was left with uh, Waffles, Mia and Simba. And they left a lot better and I didn't see any of them die, thank God. At one point they all went out and come back but thankfully I think they were okay because they were still young and they could adapt to the street. And again I had nothing to do in my hand but I was glad that they went out when they were young and they could just adapt to the street right away. Not like Chica or Lucy or Sean. Now yeah that's the story of CLS and I actually forgot to tell you what, why I named him this way Chica, Lucy and Sean. So Chica is because back then Markiplier was a big YouTuber for me. I would watch him like always and I loved him so much. I still do. So I named Chica after his dog Chica. And then Lucy was um, a friend of mine that we used to play MMOs together when I was young. Yeah, that's just a friend of mine when I was young that I, I, I like really appreciated. So I named Lucy after them. And then Sean is Jacksepticeye, another big YouTuber that I really liked back then. So yeah, I just named him to people I like, basically Chica, Lucy and Sean. Now, I honestly, I don't know how I told this story. I don't know if I did a good job or not. I'm sorry for crying. I'm sorry for making this video sad when it should be happy. I just want to say I'm genuinely happy and I'm genuinely thankful to you guys for getting us here, getting us over 100 subscribers. That's insane to me. Thank you. And I'm sorry for this video, um, but I think it was the perfect chance for me to talk about this and let you guys know what does it all mean. It will always be fake CLS. It will never just be fake. The least I can give back to Chica, Lucy and Sean is immortalizing their name on my channel. And hoping that they're in a better place now away from me. Because I'm genuinely a horrible person for what I did to them. And I will never ever forgive myself for it. Now I just want to say that I learned from this. And thankfully that now I'm old and I have my own money. And I <coughs> I basically like make my own money. I can take care of my cats now. So if you follow me on Instagram or sometimes I think I posted about it here. Um, I have... Um, well, I had one cat now. I have two cats. One of them is Cindy. I found Cindy. I adopted her off the streets. I was basically, I think it was Christmas night and I was coming back from a lesson and she like clinged to me from, uh, from my foot and she wouldn't let me go and she looked really cute. She was tiny and she looked clean. So I feel like someone just let her out of the house. So I couldn't just leave her there. I, I could not do that. So I took Cindy in my arms and I took her to my grandma again, but this time, trust me, I I am doing all I can in the world to keep them safe. I buy her specific food for her and I'm taking care of her really well. She has grown up. You can check Instagram for it. There's a highlight for Cindy and Sox, my other cat, but I'll talk about that in a bit. So Cindy is okay. She's all grown up now. I also vaccinated her. It's on Instagram as well. So yeah, I actually... <laughs> I got a fit for her and I'm making sure she's, she's okay. So thank God I I can actually give them what they deserve now and I can give them the life they deserve. And I'm not letting them go out ever, ever. And thankfully they don't feel like they want to go out because I'm giving them all they need in the house. Now the second cat is another cat adopted off the street. This one I didn't find, my grandma did. My grandma found her on the stairs and she was like really small and... She was just meowing for help, so my grandma got her inside. And this one I named Socks because she has like colored balls that look like she's wearing socks. And also her beans are like different colors. It just looks like she's wearing a sock. And I also vaccinated her, as you can see here. Again, all of this is on Instagram. And thank God I can give them the life they deserve now. Which I wish I could have given to Chica or Lucy or Sean. I wish I could back then. But I really had nothing in my hand and I can't forgive myself for it, but I hope by me giving Cindy and Sox what they deserve now, I hope a little bit of guilt can get off my chest. I'm really sorry for Chica, Lucy and Sean and I hate myself for what I did. I told you about Sox because um, the name is because of her boss. Um, Cindy, I called her Cindy because back then when I got her, um, I had a crush on a girl named Cindy, so I just thought it was a fitting name, and it actually fits her pretty well. So yeah, Cindy is just a crush name, 
back then and then socks is because of her balls okay um no more crying nothing more this is it i told you the story of Farrakh and cls i told you the three questions that are, are most asked to me and i don't know how this video is gonna come out i i know my voice was really bad because when i cry i just i can't control my voice i'm really sorry and i hope you can forgive me because i know i'm a horrible person for what i did to chica and lucy and sean i know i'm sorry and they always be in my heart always So anyway, um, thank you so much, so much for one, listening to me, two, for getting me here to 100 subscribers, over 100 subscribers even. I am honestly beyond grateful and I can't thank you guys enough. I don't feel like I deserve it, especially after this. I don't deserve it. I know I don't. But you guys are so nice and I'm just really thankful and grateful to all of you. Thank you and... I will just stop it here because I need a moment to just calm down and also I need to stop talking <laughs> and yeah I just want to say thank you and I hope I can provide you the content that you hope for. I'll see you next time.